got a package today, and I'm kind of excited about what's on the inside of this. It's a Laser Pecker 2. So Laser Pecker got a hold of me a while back. They asked if I would like to try one of these out and show it in my video. I'm really looking forward to doing this. I've got some ideas I want to try. Uh, a couple of them are based on some recent videos that I did. So if this works, it's really going to be cool. I'm not going to show you unboxing this. It's still in cellophane. All I did was cut this part open. So I'll get the parts out of the box and then we'll pick up from there. So I will see you shortly. I would say that this is probably the normal way you see this set up and probably the way it gets used most of the time. It'll do a 4x4 four four inch engraving straight down on here. You put your work underneath there and then do the engraving. But you can tilt this head. There's a screw over here. You loosen it up. This will come up here clear to 90 or you can stop anywhere between. What I did here recently was I turned this black locust bowl and I used a recess. And I used a recess for a reason because I'm going to show you what I did to that. Now that's already been done because that was still on a worm screw. This hadn't been turned. And I engraved inside that recess, but I kind of camouflaged it with a piece of, I think it was Paduk. I made a disc and put it in there and I said that's one optional way to dress up the bottom of your bowl. So, we're going to move over to the lathe and I'll show you how I set that up and engrave the bottom. Well, I think I have it semi-close. Um, I'm going to do the start to preview. So I have a rectangle there and I'm just going to move it over about like that and then we'll go show a point. Now this will right there. See you see the dot? I have a pencil line right there. I get this little warning here. It's counting down. It's at one second. And it says confirm and I say yes and uh, and it starts burning like that. I don't have the fan on so it's making lots of smoke. Well, there it is. I think it looks pretty nice and it's very easy to do, but let me show you another way to dress up a recess after you finish your bowl. I have a, about a 2 and an 8 inch disc laying there. It's about 3 16 thick. So you could engrave your logo on that or you could just engrave anything you want on there. It could be used to plug a recess on your bowl or you could just maybe drill a hole in it and put a chain on there and hang your keys from it. Let's go ahead and engrave that and I'll show you how that works. I'm going to verify that we're in the center. Now that should put everything where it wants to be. You can also show a center point like that. And that's hitting a pencil mark I had in there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, burn this. This is going very fast. Thirty two seconds. That's pretty fast. Pretty nice. I'll show you all these at the end of the video, but that's that didn't take any time at all to do. All right, I'm going to try something. I have it on a very thin bowl, and it's a little warped, and obviously it doesn't sit flat. But this is in there fairly even, I think. I am going to attempt to engrave something in the bottom of this. Now, if this bowl had a flat bottom on the inside, it would not be a problem. 
I'm going to go ahead and start this right now. I have it all set up. And there it goes. The actual burning time on this one was about 3 minutes and 20 seconds. There it is. We made it. Yay. I'll take that off and show you. How's that? Pretty cool. I know somebody that's going to like that. Wow. That's impressive. Totally impressive. I do like that a lot. All right. So it's set up like that, basically for something flat. I've got another idea. I'm going to show you something. Uh, it's not going to be a wood turning, but it's also going to be very cool. When this is not on the stand, you can still do a lot of things, such as setting it on a flat surface. It's set up to engrave right now. That's the right height. That flat surface could be a wall where you held it there. It also could be a flat surface that's on an angle. If you held it against it, it'll be in the right place. This is a piece of walnut that I pulled out of my scrap bin. It's got a taper to it. This won't care about that. It's going to sit flat on there. It's also got a bandsaw cut. I'm curious to see what that's going to look like. You'll see what, uh, what it looks like once we do it. So the actual engraving time on this took a little over five minutes, but I've sped this one up. And where I'm running normal speed, I'll let you know. Hey, okay, it's done. So there it is. It's kind of cute and this has got a rough texture on it. It's a bandsaw cut. I don't do craft shows but I'll bet you if you did do craft shows and you took a scrap piece of wood like this and with cuts on the end I bet you could sell that pretty easily because people <laughs> for some reason people really like rustic looking pieces and that's about as rustic as it gets. Yeah that was fun. I like that. That's a I think that was about as large as this old make. It's almost four inches. But uh, I think it's pretty cool. I have been looking forward to trying this out. They call it a roller table. It just adds another axis. So you can put round things in there and in engrave around them while it spins. Well, I have needed a place to put pencils out here for a long time. So I turn this and I want to engrave something all the way around it. If I went part way around it, it would be fairly easy. But I'm doing a Celtic knot and I want it to connect. Now I've just done the math and taking the diameter times pi, I think I have the right length to tell the software, which is 8.48 inches. I didn't expect it to be as wide as it is showing up. Now I'm just going to go ahead and do this because I, I got to trust the math on this, right? So that's how wide it says it is. I did not expect that. Now, I have a crack in here, but you know what? That just makes it look nice. I'm going to go right there. So I've got to get those other glasses on because I don't have the shield in there because I wanted you to be able to see it. Well, here it goes. Let's see. Start. Transferring the file. It is over there.
All right, it's not cutting as wide as it said. So that's, I guess that's good. This is pretty close to a seven minute run, so I'm going to speed it up a little bit. Right about here it hit some darker areas in the wood itself and the burning is actually darker looking as well. Well, there's the finished Celtic knot. It may not be the nicest looking one, but it was just testing things out to see how it worked. And it wasn't bad. And it's right, right here is where it came back around and met itself. So, oh, that was kind of fun to do, and it'll make a nice little pencil holder for me. So in the manual, it shows three different ways that you can use this roller table. One of them is the most obvious, putting a cylinder in there and engraving around it. The other is flipping this upside down and remounting the laser. Now these rolls pull it along your work. So you flip it upside down, place it on your board, and it tracks down and engraves what you want. That allows it to be longer than the 4 inch window that it has. If you don't have this, you're limited to 4x4. Four four. The third way is to put a board in here like so, and these rolls will grip it and feed it along there. Well, when it gets out there, it's going to get heavy, so they supply these little supports, and there's ball bearings on top. Those would go like so underneath it, and as it feeds it, it supports it. I'm going to go ahead and set this up and I'll show you how it works. Okay, I'm all set. I'm using a longer piece of plywood here and the reason is I tried a skinnier piece and it was kind of wandering down and even the longer and wider piece it started coming this way on me so I've decided to put these round pieces of steel here and have them act like guides. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but I hope so. This is just a piece of maybe eighth inch pine. It's very light. So, we'll see if we can get something engraved on this. The actual run time on this was around eight and a half minutes. And during that time, I was in the shop, but I wasn't even watching this. I was working on other things, and it turned out just fine. Okay, it's a fish. Long, skinny fish. All right, I want to try the trolley mode now. This uh, looks like it's going to be lots of fun, but so far everything's been lots of fun. Every time I finish something, I bring it into the house and show my wife, and she says, well, it looks like you're having a lot of fun, and I am. So here's how the trolley mode works. You take the roller table and you flip it over. Here's a bracket, and this bracket, I mean, I am impressed with the quality of how this is built. This has somewhat of an oval shape on the bottom, and that's a square. This will only go on this way. Take the power head off. Like so. It's kind of leaning like that. These. Uh, these were the little levelers that you use in uh, slab mode. They also they go into this slot here. These are magnetic. They don't go that way, they go this way. So now I think this probably helps pull it down your work. So that's all there is to it other than putting the power cord back on and putting the little USB cord on. 
I'm going to use this material like this, but it needs to be longer. This is just kind of inexpensive paneling I bought for making templates and, well, testing things. Let me get it set up and I'll show you how it works. Okay, it's all set to go. So now I'm just going to hit start on my phone. It's counting down. Now it says confirm and if I hit yes, we are on our way. This only took about three minutes to do and it's very simple text. You could do something a lot more complex and even longer than this if you wanted to. But I was just showing you how it works in trolley mode, which is pretty cool actually. I have plenty of things to show you because it was hard for me to stop. And most of them directly relate to wood turning in one way or another. Two of them, maybe not so much, but you could still use them in your wood turning shop and I'll tell you about it when I show them to you. But there are two features on here that do pretty much straight work. That's the slab mode and the trolley mode. And those are really cool. And I think with all the features that built into this, I think a person could generate some ideas on their own and have it do other things. Before I even show you all of the things that I did, I just want to make sure that you did understand that Laser Pecker sent me this. If I was willing to use it in a video, they offered it. I'm not getting paid anything for it and I'm not sponsoring their company. I'm just making a video of their product. So, here is the first one I did. and. It was done on the lathe. That would be a very handy way to do it. So if you didn't want to engrave down into the recess, you could turn a disc the size that your recess is and engrave on that and then glue it in place. And that way you could do a, uh, a piece of wood that contrasts just a little bit if you like to do that. Or if you do craft shows, you could make one of these for each item that you sold and hand that out with all your information on it. And I was able to put the hood right over this and I engraved that same logo on there. So if it's small enough you can do that. This just might be my all-time favorite right here. This bowl is about an eighth inch thick and uh, it's not flat by any means but I was able to adjust the uh, laser and engrave that and I just love that. I think it looks great. So you could engrave anything you want in here. Now I'll show you some other things that I think would be worth engraving into the bottom of a bowl because I think they really look nice. I was just practicing with this. This comes on the machine. There's some clip art in there. That looks pretty cool. This was just a scrap of wood that I engraved on. That looks pretty cool itself. I like that. I'm not going to do anything with it. I don't even think I'll put a finish on it. This now this is, uh, I don't know if you can catch the detail on that, but uh, on the recent trip that we did to Silver Falls State Park and took two grandsons with us, that is the picture from that. So that's my wife and myself and my two of our grandsons. So you could engrave one of those. This one now, I got a great idea for this. So I know I don't look that way anymore, but that's our wedding picture. And uh, you know what would be a great gift is, and it might be have to be after the wedding, but uh, get a picture of some relatives or friends and engrave that into the bottom of a bowl. That would look pretty cool. I was just playing around. I made two sizes. I think it did a great job. So you got a special occasion come up and usually go out and buy a card, right? Well, how special would it be to make a personalized card like this? Let me see if I can see what that says. 
Oh, just because I love you. How about that? It's about a quarter inch thick. Wrap up the package and put that on there. And then sign your name. I think that would be perfect. This was done on the uh, slab mode. I just did a fish. thought that was pretty cool. So this is the one that was done on a rotary table. It's a, sort of a Celtic knot. You could put anything you want with that uh, rotary device. That's pretty cool. And one more. This would be if you wanted to make a sign. And I just might make a sign out of a piece of wood, hardwood, that says that. I love wood turning. And I do. I think that's everything I've got. And uh, I do love this one. I like them all, actually. So I think it's a great little machine. It's really well built and it's very easy to use. I'll put a link in the description for all the information on looking these up and uh, I hope you found some benefit in it. So going back to this thing, I really love this one and what you could do is you can make a little card like this, put this in here and give it to someone really special. And I think while I'm at it, I'll put this one in there. So I appreciate you watching, and until the next time, see you later. Here's some pictures of what the laser pecker is capable of doing. And if you did like the video, click that like button and leave a comment. And for sure, next week we'll be back to turning wood.